too bad. Fuck <laughs> off. Team Empires turn to ban. Team Secrets turn to ban. You got a signal for them. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Team Empire, turn to pick. Welcome back, everybody, to ESL 1 Manila 2016. We have one of the most interesting matchups of the day. It's going to be Team Secret versus Team Empire. The new Team Secret, the very first chance that the public is going to be able to see this team fully in action. And we get a team where essentially we go back from where we started, right? Our tour and Eternal Envy working together on the same team. I've got both Blitz as well as Milk joining me. Milk, what do you think? I mean, this is going to be super interesting. I was one of the people that were deeply surprised when Universe and Artur went to Team Secret. I really didn't expect it. I didn't see it coming at all. I thought, initially, I thought it was a bad move. But, you know, over the, the past month or so, I've been hearing that they are, you know, probably one of the best inceptions that Team Secret has ever had, which is, says a lot because they've been very dominant throughout their existence. Poppy is one, is by far the, the most successful captain of anyone in the world. So to, to for him to lead up the, the potentially best secret roster of all time is going to be very interesting to follow. As somebody who's been in competitive Dota for such a long time and was there for like the peak of Dota 1 and stuff like that, what kind of separates Puppy from the rest of the captains? Like, Why is he, of all people, able to find this sustained success? I mean, I, th I think if if we could if we could clarify that a lot of mo a lot of other captains would do the same thing, right? But he's been with so many different players now, and they all respect him so highly. And you know, as you were saying, the result speaks for themselves. He's been in, well, he's top eight in every Valve event. I think we clarified, and only one of them he had, uh, two of them now, TI5 and TI4. He went out a bit sooner, but in every major he's been in, it's been grand final or or even winning it with the TIs. He's been in three grand finals. And with all these results, and then ESL ones, obviously, is also one one of them very dominant as well. I think he's just got a good understanding of how to lead a team. Most importantly, I think it's you know strategy is always important, but he also just strategizes very much, unlike anyone else. He picks to his team strength or whatever picture he has in mind, and, and then he makes it work with the players he has. And the, you know, Eternal Envy has been one of those people who's been team secrets up and down in his career, I'd say. It's been fluctuating whether he was stable or not. But during Poppy's reign in Team Secret, Envy has been playing really, really well. You know, he's had the occasional Divine Via Ember Spirit game where you're like, oh, no, he didn't. He pulled, you know, Eternal Envy. But for the most part, he's actually been a very, very stable carry player, especially as of late, the, the past six months or so. So I think Poppy's just really good at, at seeing the, the strengths and weaknesses in his players and then making the most of it and eliminating those. He really does. He really does seem like one of those people. He looks like a he seems like a leader outside of the game, whereas you can't necessarily say that about other captains. They're more of a leader because of their knowledge of strategy and all that sort of jazz. But speaking of that kind of leadership here and being able to work within your own team, what sort of things do you think that Team Secret, we don't know anything about them, right? But we do know some of the strengths of their players. What are you looking for here? Because right now we're starting off with the Wisp OD combo and they're going to follow this up with a Dazzle. This is very, uh, very defensive support style pickups from Team Secret. This is something that harkens back to maybe older patches. Not necessarily, though. One one thing we uh, we saw a year and a half ago was uh, in uh, at ESL1 in New York, where they... Wisp tri-lane, aggressive tri-lane. They went in, they took down towers, put on so much early aggression, won the game in 16 minutes. I think this is, you know, they're sort of on the, that same road, essentially. And I don't think we ever see Poppy play anything defensively. Regardless of what he picks, he still picks it to, to put pressure on the enemy. So just because he picks Dazzle, I think they'll use it sort of the same way that we saw, saw OG do in, in Frankfurt, where they just kept on taking fights especially up against a team like VP when OG played VP in Frankfurt. They would keep taking the fight to VP 
just because they know knew they could use the heel in the shallow grave. So I don't think the the assessment that it's necessarily a defensive draft is uh, is right. And then of course relocate can be used as one of the most aggressive and kill setup spells in the game. Yeah, I think something cool too about the Nyx Assassin when uh, it works really well with IO just because he can scout for you and set up kills and this is a hero that has heavy burst damage. This is a fight ender is how I think that the game should be looked at. Nyx opens up on somebody, they, he already gets them to less than half HP. Then if Empire want to take a fight, they're already at a numbers disadvantage. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Empire. I feel like this is a lineup that hasn't gotten a lot of attention coming into this event, obviously. Uh, Team Secret is going to be kind of like the marquee. How are they going to do? We want to see what the reunion of uh, Eternal Envy and RTZ looks like. But for me, Empire, this is a team where they've got a lot of individual skill. A lot of these players played on Team Spirit at uh, the Shanghai Major. They've got some standout players like Scandal, who I haven't seen in a while personally, mm -hmm. uh, who is supposed to be like all the rage. Uh, King R, I've seen him in various iterations of some tier two European teams, played a lot during uh, when FPL was around. I think Ramses is a very individually talented player. Yeah. He's like the CIS representation of Arteezy, right? Yeah. It's like all of these scenes, these like young and come upcoming like star players, but he's kind of the answer to it. He's AK highly individually skilled. I know uh, Team Spirit thought uh, maybe maturity was an issue for him a little bit just because he wasn't really sure what he wanted to do. But now he's on this Empire squad that has a lot of veteran talent and more important they've got a lot of individual skill to back them up and this could just kind of send a statement to the rest of the, the teams in this tournament like look we're going to try to take down secret it's not going to be the easiest task but if we do so we're a team to be feared i do feel like this story is kind of similar to our previous matchup with mineski you know they're not necessarily right now ranked to be their best team of their region but this is their best opportunity especially against a team who we haven't really seen anything this might be a chance for a big potential upset, better opportunity than you'll have anytime soon. Oh yeah, it also tells the tale of how regions that haven't been very successful over the course of the past year, we've seen it with China, we've seen it with the CIS countries on Southeast Asia, they're giving new talent a chance because they saw how much the, the Western countries benefit from it. We saw uh, uh, Sumail break into the scene with a huge level of success, right? Within a year, he was one of the most winning players of all time. And then of course, Atua, a player that's been re widely regarded as one of the best, very best players in the world for two years now and so it's it's the uh, established names of team secret coming up against yet another talented team that has taken in fresh players that are fairly inexperienced inexperienced competitively but they have the mechanical skills to back it up and and this is something that both china and cis needs to do at this point they need to be able to match this high level of skill that we've seen come out of uh, both america and, and western eu over the past two years. So what is this lineup from Team Secret? Break, break it down for me, because this is this almost feels like we're already in a new patch or something. This is a lineup that we don't look at at all, except for maybe the OD and Wisp. I mean, roll, oh, so you mean the, the strategical lineup, the actual heroes or the, or the players? Because player-wise, no, no, uh, uh, player I think Secret is interesting in the, in the sense that they have uh, what, what most people would regard as the best captain, probably the best offlaner. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the best mid laners. I think uh, Artisi is one of the most respected players amongst the rest of the pro pro players. He's he's just haven't had the, the same amount of results to back it up with. He doesn't have that first place finish in a major, basically. So that's where he is sort of, you know, that that's sort of the meme, the joke about it. But in reality, he's still considered one of the very best players. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason for it, but even though. Uh, there's a lot of talk about him. He was still part of that team that won four lines in a row. There's a reason why teams move around pieces just for this one guy, because he does have that talent. But uh, I don't know. I'm pretty interested to see how Empire's lineup shakes up. I think they've got a pretty good battling lineup. We're always a fan of Earth Spirit whenever he's <laughs> in a game, just because he's I mean, not. Except yeah, for the like, opposing team. The one thing I think that. Uh, Empire is going to struggle with though is roaming on these heroes is pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Like going against the width, it's, uh, it's not going to be easy. Later on, as the game progresses to killing this Naga, I don't know if they have 
They do have a lion. They do have a lot of burst damage, actually, and a lot of control and silences. And, and, and it seems as if the team fight is always going to go in the favor, uh, favor of Team Empire. If this is an even game, and they can manage to to nullify Song of the Sleep or not allow Secret to escape out of a team fight with Song of uh, with Song of the Siren, then then Empire should by all means win straight up five on fives. Yeah. The only issue I think with uh, team Secrets or uh, Team Empire's lineup is that they don't have the best high ground ability. They don't have uh, building hitters. So even if they take early advantages, it's going to be hard for them to just end the game. The benefit is that they do have a Spectre who can go toe to toe late game with a lot of these heroes, but at the same time, you're <laughs> going to go late game against the Naga Siren plus uh, OD. Yeah, Always going to be a scary test. It's the fact that we're dealing with two big carries, right, on the side yeah. of Secret. And as you were saying, it's incredibly hard to kill off this lineup, especially going into the late game when you have the Wisp and the Dazzle to sort of keep the, the target that Empire chooses to go on alive. And then also you have Song of the Siren to, to just break it all up and run away. And then Nixus has an OD, have his, his capability in, in their own right as well, both through Astral and Vendetta and Spike Carapace and so forth. So... It can be very infuriating, actually, especially for some of these new players to come up and play against this. It might actually, you know, sort of tilt them. Well, we are going to have the banner rune picked up at the bottom lane by Secret. It looks like they're fully dodging uh, this attempt at the Darkseer and uh, Earth Spirit dual lane, kind of similar to the Tusk Darkseer that we saw from our previous series. Uh, Secret's plan is actually to try and fully dodge that one. They are still going to be pursued out. Looks like Darkseer is already at the bottom lane now. Do you think it's just because of the fact they feel more comfortable matching against the Spectre than uh, for their Carry Naga Siren? Or is this something intended for Universe to get an, more of an advantage from? This is what they used to do right at the beginning of the game when they had with Misery. misery. Yeah, they yeah. try to give Misery this 1v1 start because I think the one thing that people really underrate Eternal Envy is his ability to come back into a game. Even when he has to be the aggressor in this lane, he's going to make sure that his offlaner gets a lot of space and I think that's the right idea. As it's, at the same time, Nyx Assassin, especially, is one of those offlane heroes that actually needs the level to to be valuable to the team. And the, the sooner that he comes online, he doesn't catch up as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very important that he gets six and gets to, to be that threat around the map. Oh, bottom puppy, he's going to be caught out. We were following that one for a while, and there's really not anything Eternal Envy can do. One of the, perhaps, downsides of running a carry like this can't really help out when the aggression turns on to the supports. That dual lane, though, is stupid strong mm -hmm. by Empire. Darkseer plus Earth Spirit, I don't know what you're supposed to do that against many combinations just because the kill potential is so high. At the double Ion Shell with the gap closing support, of all things, like that's the ridiculous part. Yeah. Is Earth Spirit's a support. Like, if they realize that this hero doesn't need a lot of farm to do what he does. And uh, that's the benefit right now is that Secret, their OD is going to have an easy time mid against this puck. Scandal's already just at uh, a paltry 3 CS's, Artur's already at 9. Meanwhile, in this top lane universe is getting at least a lot of levels. He's already picked up his level 3, and uh, I think Secret's timing is more based around levels than anything. Yeah, that, that's the, uh, definitely the, the biggest thing, and that's one of the problems with aggressive tri-laning, right? If that fails, you, you, you risk being put behind so far that you can't really catch up until very much later in the game, so I think it's... It's... I'm curious to see how it pans out. This creek cam next to the lane is going to be very valuable to Secret. Yeah, top universe is going to get right click by King R. Not really going to lead to too much, but... Again, this mid lane, things are... Kind of going relatively slowly. It feels like they're not even bothering sending the Air Spirit mid, just because it is an OD. But they want to make an attempt at Eternal Envy. And it was blocked in by the Invis from Maposhka, and they're trying to get a little bit more body blocking in time for double Ion Shell. They will hit that rolling boulder, slowing down Eternal Envy even further. Their Ion Shell is doing a majority of damage, and it will be enough to kill the Naga Siren. A high amount of armor is uh, usually a problem for killing the Naga Siren in the landing phase, but you look at a match like this, the double Ion Shell, lots of magic damage, follow that up with a kick or two, and that's good enough to be able to get the kill. At this point, does Secret consider uh, rotating again. Do they move Nyx Assassin out of that top lane and try and get away from this Darkseer combo? Oh, bottom again. Yeah, because they might lose I Lai Dai here. He's already got the spirits out, but Poshka trying to commit for the kill, but he can't quite get it. And finally, Team Secret will get themselves a kill on the board. I think one thing that is to be said about the, the current patch and meta is that dying early on in, in, in the game right now, in the first 10 minutes, isn't 
that detrimental to uh, to the progress of your game. So that as long as they even it out around the 10 to 15 minute mark, it doesn't matter all that much. Yeah, I completely agree. I had this discussion with uh, Purge just now too, where like the overall, it won't affect the overall context of the game unless the lanes go so out of control. Like if you start the game zero to ten or something like that. Yeah. So in other words, you're okay with them continuing. I think so, as long lane. as they put the dazzle on the top instead of committing the three heroes on the bottom lane. Yeah. yeah. Poppy re read the game correctly, obviously, because it's Poppy, and he goes up in the top lane instead. Make sure that Spectre doesn't have the easiest of times. Nyx gets some more space. He gets some level himself. Sort of just evens out the laning phase. Right now, they're gonna make the mid lane. Arteezy is gonna be picked off here, it looks like, as the silence might be enough. No, the fairy fire, he gets enough time to be able to get off that imprisonment after the silence fails. Looks like they may still be able to run down Scandal. Pops a healing cell, has an orb coming up in two seconds' time. He's gonna go back into the river and should be able to escape from this one. They have the extra movement speed, but it looks like Scandal is healthy enough to be able to stay alive. Yeah, I don't even think that Astral was that necessary. I'm pretty sure he was. Oh, but just like that, they realize this is the opportunity to go on the bottom lane. They roll in in Mopochka. That was a beautiful combination from the Earth Spirit. Just the minor thing, but him coming in, hitting that rolling boulder, and then kicking Eternal Envy deeper into the lane. So they have the time to run him down with the Ion Shell. That was a perfect combination by him. I think the biggest problem that Secret has right now is that I don't see any other options for them to create enough space for Eternal Envy to catch up, of course, other than, than the Nyx Assassin. Something you can do here. Phase shift may not cost you any mana, but it's certainly not going to get you away from our tour when he sees that opening. I sort of think that Secret should now begin to at least think about rotating the lanes, just because the Nyx is about to hit his level 6. Once that happens, I think that's when you make the full rotation, especially exactly. when he has Arcane Boots. Before that point, I guess you want to hard commit for that, otherwise it messes with the overall timing of the game, which sounds a little bit weird just because Eternal Envy is struggling at bottom, but you want to make sure that this sacrifice is meant for something. Get another kick, slowing down EE. This time they can't fully commit for a kill or anything. Alright, so now you have the level 6 on your verse, uh, you've got the arcane boots too. I think this is around the time where you want to swap things out, because Empire, the something they've done really well is they've just abused this bottom lane, and they've picked up quite a few levels on their Earth Spirit. Yeah, and what the you may not know, because they don't sit and practice with us all day when we practice with vegetables, is that the Nyx Assassin is one of those heroes that wants to pose a constant threat around the map by being out of vision, basically. As long as you can't see him, you think he's on your lane. Yeah. That's the mindset that you're in. And I think Universe, one of the reasons why he's considered one of the best offlaners in the world is because he's so good at always being at the right time, at the, in the right uh, right place at the right time, and then also constantly off map. He'll never touch creep waves. He'll always be post that constant threat and, and be create paranoia in the enemy. Yeah. I think the best way I've ever had it explained is when um, Merlini told me, he's like, you want the enemy team to always have that sense like, oh, he's probably down here, and you want them to constantly second-guess themselves, and uh, I think the benefit, though, right now is the Empire has read this situation really well. They know that this is the kind of read uh, that Secret will make, where they'll rotate once they hit their level 6 on their offlaner, and they'll swap the two lanes, but first they'll look for that invasion into the Radiant safe lane. I think Empire have done that really well. Mm -hmm. Clearly this is a team they scouted out. Yeah, they very much backed out. And that is a big downside of the Nyx Assassin, right? Is that his timings are kind of easy to read. They're gonna oh, at bottom? Nice! Follow up with the Silence. They're going to be able to fully take down Universe before he ch has a chance to hit a button. That Four to was two absurd. Now. Empire very crisp on the execution and reading secret strategy to a T. The US Spirit especially, that was such a fast kick. That was actually, coordination-wise, that was excellent. Like, that is a really well-coordinated team. They they called for it immediately. They said, Haunt now. They get everything in, off in conjunction. They pick up a kill on a relatively high uh, level hero, too. So what's interesting is that Eternal Enemy is actually leading the CS board despite his early deaths. I think the lane just keeps pushing into him when they decide to go for the kills on him. But... Mm -hmm. 41 CS when you've died uh, two times and have been relatively pressured doesn't look nearly as good. Especially since a lot of those are neutrals. They're going to have to lean really heavily on this mid laner as uh, Arteezy still has the advantage against this puck mid, which is what we expected. Especially since the Earth Spirit almost entirely focused on shutting down that bottom lane. So do you think that the, the, the tower push is going to come out as soon as the Doxia has the mechanism? I don't know if it'll just be like straight tower pushes ever, just because I don't think their lineup functions around that. But it's more just 
Earth Spirit goes around, sets, a, sets up an opportunity for their Spectre, and then maybe they decide to go for the push thereafter. Mm -hmm. The crazy thing right now about Empire's lineup, though, is uh, they've already got the level 6 on the Earth Spirit. That's a really fast level 6 on a support hero. And you can create a lot of chaos with this ultimate. This may be that kind of opening that you're looking for here. Maposhka teeping into the tier 2 at mid. These are two of your big initiators to try and set up a, a potential pickoff that can lead into maybe more of a team fight or pressuring a tower. And Arteezy's used the... Yeah, unfortunately, our Earth Spirit no longer in position at this mid lane, or maybe he could punish this. They may still be able to. Scandal's dropping a bit low. They managed to get the Hex under Arteezy. Nice long kick there from the Earth Spirit to be able to finish off the risk. They're going to be able to roll into Maposka. They have the follow-up here from Ramses as they identify our tour at target number Uno to be able to take down. He goes for the TP out. Do they have a stun? They actually don't. No vacuum up on the Darkseer, so he's able to get out. But Secret's still losing a lot out of that fight. Two heroes picked off, and the mid lane is going to be pressed out by Empire. Really well done by Empire in terms of execution. I think the only thing that went sort of out of sorts is the Earth Spear could have just been sitting mid and waiting for that opportunity, but... Oh, what is this? Eternal Envy setting up the sleep on a scandal here. Do you actually think they're going to be able to pick him up? The right kind of impale? Nope. Get the orb out. Meanwhile, they do have the relocate in. Able to catch Afterlife, so that's one for Team Secret, but they need a little bit more. But Poshka, ooh, Arteezy canceled that ultimate, realizing it was just barely going to be out of range. Hoping to be able to get an extra kill off of that one still. Secret alleviating some of that pressure in the mid lane. That was a very optimistic go on the uh, Puck by Universe. Mm -hmm. Scandal still going to be imprisoned up here. Doesn't have the orb, has a regen, but I don't think he has enough space. Artur still has the ultimate to be able to drop and hits King R as well. He still has enough mana to be able to get off the hex, but now with the drums activated, King R's just going to be run down. Easy peasy for Arteezy. Six to five now, ten and a half minutes in. And he's created a lot of space for his team. They made the right move in making sure that he had an easy lane matchup here. Is now you start to see that the laning phase didn't nearly matter as much as we thought. So we can say that Team C uh, or excuse me, Team Empire, in a way, like with their crisp execution, they were doing you know the right things, but it was kind of the things they had to do, right? They had to be able to win the laning phase just because of the fact they knew Team Secret was going to be able to come online a little bit later with their kind of team fight. Exactly, and when the ultimates are up, they're obviously going to win these team fights. but as soon as they're down, in the, and because they don't have this natural tower push ability, and because of the low levels in the early game, they just couldn't commit to the fights early on uh, after, what, after their initial fight. So when, when Secret went back in with Relocate and so forth, it was easy kills for them to pick up again, and then they, they sort of end up with even trade right. They lose two heroes initially, but then they gain Another three kills, actually, because they picked him up in their own jungle. So, Blitz, explain to me why, in that case, if the ultimate's down from the OD, so is the sleep, why didn't Empire rotate to the bottom lane? Is there something better about them putting pressure on mid? Because it seems like this would be the time to fight. I just think it, you can't rotate heroes in one by one, and mid, Ramses is going to get gone on, but Boyle's down there. The universe tries to hit the stun, oh, Mission's out on that one, and now the Earth Bear making the big initiation, already gets the three-man silence. They're going to follow up again, going for RTZ first, trying to force him back, might they be able to kill him, but a little so bit badly. more damage all requires, but Tylai Dai comes in with save at the perfect time. Secret will have to play back, though. Can't get any sort of turnaround, even if they do manage to save RTZ. It still costs them a buyback on the Wisp to be able to save RTZ's life. I think that's fine, and most importantly, they were able to protect this mid-tier one tower, because I think if Empire win that fight with any sort of advantage, they try to take that one down, but... Man, that was rough, just because, again, you had to commit a lot of ultis for that. For a second, it looked really good. The Earth Spirit got into the middle four heroes, he's able to get his mag slides off, but... There just wasn't enough follow-up damage so far. Exactly, because it's only the Wisp that is taken back in, in in his income, it doesn't really matter too much. It all it just buys secret sufficient time for them to just scale into the late game. Sir, uh, Siren obviously, as as William said earlier on, Siren OD is gonna be beating the Spectre in the late game. Darkseer Park is not enough for them to to go in and take that fight. They do have a lot of disabled though, especially through Lion, so it's gonna be interesting, but I do think it benefits them as long as they keep this middle tower alive. So Having that team fight and Empire, unfortunately not gaining much with their big team fight ultimates. The ball is now in Team Secret's court. Is the OD back up with his big time ultimate? Naga Siren also has the sleep, but not with his team here. So they're just going for a simple three man push, trying to force Empire into rotations here. Unfortunately, the kick is going to be sidestepped there by our tour. And they Secret know. will dance away. Now there's four heroes up here, but. 
the one downside of Empire's lineup is they can't really create pressure on the other side of the map. Uh, they don't have a hero like the Nature's Prophet that naturally does that for them. If anything, they sort of have to take these engagements mm -hmm. just because they don't have that superior tower pushing. So even if they go for their own bottom push, a hero like Spectre, he's not going to pressure that tower down really quickly. And one thing we haven't touched upon is actually Scandal's farm on the puck. He is far behind right now. He's only sitting on 1100 gold, oh. so, so he doesn't have that uh, blink dagger gold. It's 14 minutes in too. Like that, the timing of that kind of just makes puck a real big knockback in this game so far. Yeah, his CS was so low from that mid lane 1v1 that he was forced into. The biggest issue here is just when you initiate with Puck, you almost always want to do it with uh, your Blink Dagger and you want the orb to be that saving mechanism for yourself so that you can orb out while simultaneously getting a lot of the damage in. The later this goes on, the more difficult it's going to be for them to burst or set up the fights and Secret are going to go for a smoke of their own as they're going to move down here and Empire, they want to take this fight but they might just not have the items of the heroes to do it. Puppy putting himself out there as bait. He knows the rest of the team is going to be able to follow this up, but he won't immediately jump on a Puppy, but the trap is run. Now the Red Seeker come in, a big ultimate being dropped by Artur, already limiting the mana of Team Empire. Ramsey's committing here for Universe, but the damage is coming out from the Earth Spirit. They slow down this fight now. Secret going to be able to stay the Universe with that imprison. Maposhka continuing to get some damage out. Universe is going to be left behind here as Team Secret call quits on that team fight. Not really able to get the execution that they wanted. They did set up that trap nicely, but weren't able to finish off the puck. That was definitely one of the bigger targets they were aiming for. Yeah, I think Universe missed his uh, his impale. I think he wanted to 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 use it, and then he cancelled it. I mean, that I'm, it must have been just because the the way that that fight started was actually really good for Secret. Like they lost the dazzle, but they had a uh, Empire had to commit so much for that. Again, or tour manages to sidestep everything the Earth Spirit is throwing at him, but he still managed to get the double impale into Pylar Die, almost being popped by the Finger of Death, but again, the double support combination saving each other, time after time, will be able to provide the turnaround as he come in and force and take the numbers advantage against Team Empire. Both teams battling around this mid tower, they want to make sure that they don't just give it up for free. All of the engagements taking place around this area is secret. They're going to make sure that they flash some heroes mid. Don't want to give up this tower for free if you can. Even denying it wouldn't be a hard win for them. Uh, they really just can't deal with this uh, OD right now. He's too tanky, and with the backup of the Shadow Priest and the the Dazzle, it's oh, that's the same. Hero. The Wisp and the the Dazzle, it's incredibly difficult for Rainfire to do anything, especially when they don't have all the ultimates to uh, to commit. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think of this build from uh, Artur? I know. Not a big fan of item build splits, but Hooded Defiance is something a little bit uh, unusual, but it does play into what we're talking about. Tanking up, making sure that between these supports and his item build, that he lives through any kind of initiation from Fire. Yeah, That's I right. think it's I think it's pretty interesting in the sense that uh, he negates a lot of the burst damage that Empire have, and that's the only way they're going to be able to pick him off, right? If you think about it, he's got both the Dazzle and a Wisp to be able to save him, so usually the way that you get around those two heroes is that you just burst somebody down before they can get their saving mechanisms off, but by having this hood, he can take a lot of sustained damage and kind of just turn things around. And that's a function that he just used that we don't often see as the active of the hood as well. Mm -hmm. So he's got 1200 HP to back himself up on top of a Dazzle, I think it's an okay item progression. So we saw what it's already done to him. We saw Lion commit the, the Finger of Death to the Wisp instead, knowing that he was just going to heal up, so they might as well try to take out the supports, and even that failed. Yeah. I think what you saw right there, too, in that mid attempt, uh, more than anything, is just think about why they made that move. They feel we have to do something about this OD. So Empire gets a little bit impatient, and they focus so much of their attention on this OD. They're like, they're, it's constantly in their mind that we have to do something about this OD. So they make the move. It's rushed. It, there's not a whole lot of synergy to it. It's a very low percentage play, but they make it just because the, the hero exists, essentially. And you have a good player playing him. So it's kind of like the same factor we saw uh, in that Liquid series when they were playing against the Invoker. They made a lot of low percentage maneuvers onto the Invoker just because it was an Invoker. Is this where our Wisp Dazzle come back into the meta here via Team Secret? This is a combination that we used to see a lot more of that, you know, putting priority for priority and stopping the initiation or at least being able to prevent someone from going down. Is this where the playstyle of Team Secret is going to lead us? I think it works when you have heroes like a Naga who will continue to independently farm and you have a frontliner like the OD who can just deal out damage early game.
It depends a lot on, on what team we're watching. I think teams such as OG, Secret, as we're seeing right now, uh, historically two teams that likes to play the Dazzle a lot, so yeah. That's definitely an option, but I don't think it's something a part of the cake is gonna miss, but they still managed to get the dream cloud follow-up. Hex missed out the impale, and now the relocate out comes in from Pili Die. Perfectly on point. That and was another finger? initiation. Radiance Completely failed. That was the finger of death use too, and again, that's that looked actually like a really nice movement by them, but with the miss done and the wisp waiting behind there, I think no matter what he was okay. And again, that's just secret anticipating. They realize this OD is going to be at the center of the focus right now of the game. Yeah, it might seem as if it's Empire who's been in control of the entire early game, but if you look at it this way, there's most farm on Team Secret's course, and they've actually managed to take down a tower, whereas Empire is still struggling with that tower boost through their lineup. They are going to get that middle tower now. And this is a really big tower for them to pick up, just for morale more than anything too, but it's going to open up a way into this jungle for them, and... The next move would probably be to knock down that top tower. Yeah, exactly. Now that they have the blink on bottom, finally, and they, they have all the essential items that they need on all of their heroes, even the spec, him evening out with the, the Siren right now is, is just uh, is sort of the problem with their lineup. They needed all these, these kills and needed to so, sort of snowball the lead against Team Secret, but because they had this defensive playstyle where they could just punish them as soon as Empire's ultimates were down, it's just rendered the, the Spectre sort of falling a bit behind, actually. Did you see that move, by the way, by Empire? Uh, as soon as the top tower is pressured in by the Dark Seer Ion Shell, Dyer's Empire pink whites to that top tower and says, guys, nobody's defending Dyer's this. So they immediately send a hero down near the Roche Pit, just because they want to be at least somewhat in position. They don't want to get caught uh, by anything. But that's just another example of what it does when you push in the waves. It gives you free information. And uh, Team Secret at the same time recognizes this and say, this is a little bit too obvious. Nobody's defending this top tower. So secret miss out on, uh, or at least denied by Team Empire. Another opportunity for them to take Roshan. Yeah, and that, that is one of like, you would say OD is probably one of the best Aegis heroes, right? Yeah, just because he doesn't rely on anything. His ultimate. The crazy thing about this hero is like your ultimate is just icing on the cake. It ends the fights, <laughs> definitively. But uh, they don't. You don't really need uh, to rely on it just because the arcane orb. You know enough stacks of that. You're perfectly fine when it comes to damage. Uh, well, what we're gonna see now is that with the with the lack of tier one towers that are starting to go down, you're gonna see how Secret can just move around the map with small groups of heroes because the Siren can easily escape as long as Lion doesn't have a blink dagger. The Nyx Assassin can, with a bit of anticipation on how Empire is gonna move around the map, can also fairly easily escape. And even then, if one of them gets caught, it's not the end of the world. And then the, there's the Wisp running around with the OD, the in, entire game now able to relocate pushing out the waves and when the radiance comes, comes on the siren it's going to be even worse for empire who's forced to run around as a full group of heroes especially when their tier one towers goes down because they can no longer rely on tping into it mm -hmm. so that that's really going to struggle for them going into this mid game and that's going to mean that they fall further behind the net worth yeah again i i feel like this is another situation where team secret percent uh the kind of a uh, pretty obvious you know, win scenario where they they show the dazzle at the top. If there's a go there, they can go for Roshan in return for Team Secret. But Empire, I think, read that that same exact thing. It feels like these two teams are actually understanding a lot about the the strategy that both are trying to employ here and countering. Yeah, it's a lot of just mixes and feints more than anything from both sides. They're mm -hmm. just kind of testing things out. The benefit that Secret have is, of course, they're going to have the Radiant Naga, which is going to be a huge spike to her. Uh, something about Empire as well. I don't. I sort of feel they kind of have to start getting aggressive across the map. Like Ramses's farm isn't really picking up as much as it should be. Uh, most importantly, this lion has really fallen far behind. But part of the reason why lion is so dangerous and why it was prioritized by Secret Edge is for the ability for this hero to set up kills with just one other hero because of how strong Finger of Death is. When you can just get the lion plus the puck to pick somebody off. But who on Secret can you do that to? You've got a hood OD that has demonstrated time and time again has a support behind them. Oh, they didn't realize that, but that was actually a trap set up by Empire, and they fall through beautifully. Seeker make the relocate in. Fortunately, Artur is going to be this. He's delayed by the Shallow Grave, and he will be able to maybe get one kill. Not even that much. The imprisonment. They're going to go for the kick immediately, and right as he comes back, beautifully typed by Maposhka, a star or spirit player. 
being born here today. That was... We're really seeing his level at a high level playing. They might Mike get still has that ultimate. They might be able to catch more as Puppy. He's definitely dead. Universe is going to be able to get out. So two go down, make it a third. Universe at the very last second, he's, he made that call. I'm going on the Spectre, relocating la at that last half second. He sees more of Empire and realizes it's a trap and blinks himself away. But by yeah, that point, it's too think late. About that. He, he had actually had to scout them already for a split second at, at the turn of the lane. So I was surprised that they went on that. I don't think they expected all five heroes to be there. That's that's probably what happened. I think they expected two of them and that they could blow, blow up the Spectre fast enough. But the relocate was just slightly off and it allowed the Earth Spirit to just come in and combo as they landed, basically. The Wisp blew, off Im blew up immediately. And then the OD was just there, being disabled by the rest of the lineup that came in afterwards. I don't think they expected the five. I think the cool thing about that too is, the way that Empire set set up, their top lane is pushing in, their mid lane is at an even uh, even area. And the big thing about that is, that means Secret aren't sure where the rest of the heroes are. They could be farming their own jungle, they could be farming uh, the Dire jungle, the Radiant jungle. There's a lot of areas for Empire to open up the map for themselves when you push out the lanes like that. And this is something that you should watch as a viewer at all times, like where the lane, uh, where the lanes are relative to the rest of the game, because that's always going to determine your information. Like if you know top is pushing in like Empire did and nobody goes to defend that, then you can already reasonably assume that there's nobody on that dire jungle area. And so Empire, they make sure they push out the lanes, they do all the little things right, then they set up for that bottom gank just because they think, okay, maybe the Spectre's not here by himself, but maybe all five aren't like waiting right on top of him. Like they won't be able to respond to this in time. Yeah. This was great for Empire, but they're still playing against this clock where the Siren and the OD is just going to be too much for them to handle with the with the support on the back, back, back end of it. So I still think they need to continue seeking out these fights through through clever play, possibly going for a smoke gank on the OD. I think that kind of play though, Jacob, it only works like once. It's like you can only surprise a team like that. It's yeah, like exactly. one of those like, cool one-off moves. And because Universe was in Vendetta, it was actually weird that he wouldn't scout deeper into the yeah. uh, to the jungle and into the lane to see if there was anyone hiding behind them. But these smoke gangs is what they I think they need to execute, but they shouldn't be doing it on this side of the map. I think they should be lo actively looking for the Wisp and the OD. Looking through Dire Jungle? Yeah. Oh, this is good. So this uh, mid lane is going to be pushed in. What Empire are going to do is they're going to get advantage of this high ground area first. Oh, and the potion gun is out on that. that roll. Universe does manage to get himself blinked out. They're still going to be able to get a bit of combo here. The Dream Coil goes out, and Pilot Eye is going to be hit by this one, but it's not enough to finish him off. And Eternal Envy with a saving grace here. Goes down the sleep. Oh, this is and bad. And there is nothing Empire could do about that. And that was three different ultimates being used from Empire, all pretty decent duration ones, and Empire gained nothing off of this. And this is why it's so critical for the initiations that they do actually find for them to be able to execute it perfectly because Secret always have an answer. Yeah, that line, this lineup is just, it's frustrating to play against, is what it is. You've got uh, two levels of security for Secret in both the supports. Most importantly, you've got Eternal Envy who just has to sit back, walk in. Or Tor just blinks right in. There are three heroes surrounding him. The universe is going to be able to combine him. Come back up to Earth. The kick comes in. They blow up Universe. Now here comes the relocate in as Pylai die. Hoping to be able to survive. The six seconds required to be able to get our Tor the hell out of here. Three more seconds for the Dukes. They're coming quick and fast. It looks like oh, Pylai die will go down first. Our Tor has no chance in hell. Trapped in a corner and secret. Quick on the retreat, but Empire have already won the big engagement. They might be able to get more. Yeah, the dagger's going to be able to fall, Puppy. He has no out here whatsoever. And Empire just want to fight right outside of the Roshan pit. They immediately funnel in. They're going to be able to take themselves ages. Empire have finally gotten control of this game that you two were both trying to push them towards, constantly trying to say, you know, they have to get aggressive. They finally found that fight. Yeah, luckily for Empire, they still had that Earth Spirit ultimate. Ready to Magnetize is so good. <laughs> it really is, especially in conjunction with the, with the Darks here as well. But what it is is also the fact that this Nyx Assassin, they, they keep getting these false sense of, we can fight this. But in the first one, he just sets them up for failure. We saw that the gang on the bottom lane that sort of put Empire ahead of this in, in this game. And then now in this fight, he goes in, he doesn't use Spike Carapace immedi immediately, which is going to lead him to be disabled and be blown up immediately. So they essentially have their only hero that can set up things for them, just die in every fight or not be there. Yeah. Can we agree that that was a mistake by Empire to back out? Naga Siren ult was down. Obviously, the OD ult was down because he just used it right before he died. Hey, I think it was fine. The way that they reset up, because one thing about Secret that really lack when you've got all of these levels of uh, defense on their team, the one thing they really lack is crowd control. 
Like they, their two supports don't provide anything in the way of disables. They just keep this OD alive. So when you can uh, get rid of the Nyx Assassin really quickly, and the fights evolve like that, it's really hard for Grit to continue it, just because it's an OD chasing heroes around. And you never want that. You want static targets for the OD to just get on top of it. But Empire, if you look at their lineup, their two supports, yeah, they might not be getting too much harm, and uh, the team fights early on kind of didn't shake their way, but at the same time, these are heroes that can come back into the game really easily. Magnetize, like Jacob pointed out, an incredible spell. Line is always going to have two different ways uh, to disable in the fights as well. But you're okay with them not completing that Roshan? Because I feel like it's still liability if you get the OD Aegis. If the thing about overcommitting against the Naga Siren is that if you're not in any position to... Because they can't take down Roshan very fast. They don't yeah. have the heroes to do it. So if you can't commit, if you go low, Sleep is going to catch you well, off guard. that's down. my point. Sleep was on cooldown. Yeah, yeah it was it on gets cooldown up so very significant. No, no, it, it was up 10 no, seconds I, after I, the it was 20. It was like 25 seconds. I, I think that you can Even delay then, the fight enough from Team Secret. I don't okay. think it's... I don't think you're, you do Roshan so incredibly fast. Uh, if you notice, they were hitting it for like 10 seconds, they got it down to like a quarter. Mm -hmm. If Secret do anything to slow down, you just slow down the Dazzle Ultimate, for example, yeah. into the Rosh Pit, then they're going to stop doing it. I, I think Empire had the right idea right there. I don't think you make that... It's too risky. Yeah, exactly. Because think about what they gain there. You get an Aegis on... Who does who does it really game change on? Like Puck? No, not really. He doesn't have any items. He doesn't have a huge streak to go off of. We talked about in the last game why Spectre, as an Aegis carrier, is somewhat subpar. He's not like the OD where he's going to get that constant damage off, right? He relies on that haunt. So like, you almost, uh, as, as stupid as this gonna sound, you almost consider putting on, on the Lion so that he's a factor again once he respawns, just because he's gonna be blown up so fast by this secret lineup, because once OD releases anything on him, he's gonna go down, but those disables are valuable. Oh, Spike Hair pays into the stun, after Lion is gonna get taken out by RTZ, but maybe not, the mech goes down, one more hit, if they do manage to get the kill, still go the front, but Tor Fired is gonna be able to take our tour in return, they do get the sleep out, that's only gonna be able to save Universe's life, it was just a tad bit too late to be able to save the others a team secret another gank team secret go for again the nyx assassin setting up a relocate but empire so quick with the response are going to be able to catch three there as puppy finally ends up going down and now team empire pounding on the door of the tier two this value gem pickup too from the puck has made a huge difference because uh secret have been playing division game so much but yeah, and they can no longer rely on, on the uh, Nyx Assassin to go around yeah. and scout for information for them. He actually has to play a very passive game. And so Universe hasn't been this factor that he usually is on a, a lot of other heroes. Yeah. We just talked about, too, how important this Nyx is for the rest of the secret lineup, just because he's their main initiation and he's their main disable. Like, it's really hard. Uh, he has a really difficult job just because he has to do both. He has to stay alive. He has to make sure that he scouts them. At the same time, he has to make sure that he gets some sort of stun off to control. And with all of that, he has to make up for the four four heroes on Empire in order for them to have an even five on five. So it's it's a it's a tall order for Universe, but he's also I still, in two of these fights, I think he's been a bit lackluster in, in the execution of his spells. Yeah, as if it's it's probably not one of his most comfortable heroes at present time. Yeah, credit to where credit is due though. Empire's played this game really definitely, well. Definitely. Even in the games where they or the moments where they looked a little bit shaky, the overall strategy aspect of this team seems really strong. Like I was actually surprised that they were matching the movements uh, over and over of Team Secret. They understood like, oh, this top lane's pushed in, guys, let's reset the fight. Uh, let's look over here. They just consistently look for these uh, focused team fights and. But we knew from the get-go that any 5-on-5, five five, any full-on team fight would always go in the favor of Empire as long as they had the ultimates up. Yeah. I mean, that, this lineup is really scary. You've almost got a BKB on Afterlife now, so the Arcane Orb won't really do too much to him. We already talked about how much Secret lies on uh, more of their magic damage. And the bottom universe might just go down again. Trying to push out that bottom lane, but will be caught by the double supports. And these supports have so much more mobility now with King R being able to have a Blink Dagger. This I this Earth Spirit's been godly this entire game. By far, my MVP so far for Empire. Easily. Oh, this has got to be a 1-2 ban from Team Secret if we go to a game 2. Yeah, 4-1-12 and 12 already. Hasn't died. I just died once. And it was looking grim for Empire in, in the mid to, to mid-late game stage, where they got this 18-20 minute blink on, on the puck. And then Lion, when I thought normally a team that is controlled would probably have that blink dagger for the land around the 22, 24 minute mark, but he finished his tranquil boots by now he has that blink dagger and that'll mean that they can go on anywhere around the map and always make sure that the target is permanently disabled, which means that the Naga Siren 
can also go down easily. So yeah. they they have no guarantee of escape anymore. This is going to be troubling too for uh, Team Secret because this game, Empire, relatively new squad. You know, they've been kind of just like cobbled together because they needed a team for this event. I mean, they've impressed and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Team Secret. This team has a lot of expectations. When you go in without having played a single game together as a group, as the tournament favorites, and suddenly you're back into a wall by a team that everyone just thought you would blot out of the water, it kind of becomes a little bit scary. Like they, mm -hmm. You can't have that doubt creep into your mind. Add to that, this is not one of the usual goofball strategies that, that Poppy sometimes picks for, for his team. You know, It's not one of those, let's try out Necrophos because it looks good. Let's, uh, let's give our Venomancer an Aghanim Scepter because that's, uh, that's a fun meme. It's not one of those lineups. They still have some really, really good heroes that works well together and creates a lot of frustration for the enemy. So, so you're saying just because this lineup does look a little different, it does look like a practice strategy. I think so. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I also think it's it's a statement that they insist on picking this Nyx Assassin the same way they've used when they played with Misery. Even mm -hmm. if even if it's not one of those heroes that we've been used to seeing Universe on. It's it's actually a hero that complements his uh, repertoire playstyle, and I think it should something that they'll eventually be really good at executing with as well. Yeah. So can we can we emphasize then that this is definitely Team Empire playing much better than expected and playing at high like an incredibly high level reading this game. I think as a and team, not they're team playing... secret coming in low. Oh yeah, definitely. But as a team, I think that this is where Empire's real strength in this game has shown so far, that they are actually coming together really, really well. Their strategy, their understanding of movement around the map has been really, really well executed so far, and they, they constantly know on how to deal and how to react to the, to the way Secret is playing. It's it's actually Secret who fails to react to how Empire is playing right now. Yeah, I actually really hate that one. Uh, oftentimes there will be these moments, but it's not even a team playing badly. Is You should start to recognize when a team, yeah, when exactly. the enemy team is playing well, mm -hmm. more importantly. A lot of teams, or a lot of people are going to point to this mid-game. Even if uh, Secret go on to win this game, they'll say, oh man, they played so badly. But I think this is just Empire executing at a high level. Like that bottom gank when they instantly got on top of Universe, no mistakes there. They were so clean in their execution with the initial haunt. And that team fight uh, by the Roche Pit too. Like they've done all the little things right, and that's what's impressed me so far. But I think are... from individual players' perspective, I think only Miposka has really stood out to me as playing on a very high level from Empire. I think both Scandal and King R has been sort of uh, yeah, they're shaky throughout the game. So mm -hmm. again, that comes back to them as a team performing. Yeah, the strategy exactly. of them being it's, really on it's point. It's not the individual place. Well, again, the Earth Spirit has been playing really, really well. Mm -hmm. It's also a very good hero to play really well on. But on a good strategy, you only need one hero, uh, one player sometimes to be, you know, hitting everything and doing well, doing well for the strategy as yeah, itself, it, 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 it may go the other way, you know, if they have a, a fight that is executed wrongly, then the OD might just pick up all the kills. Yeah. I think uh, something too, though, is Secret, you know, we're talking as if they are at a disadvantage, which they are, but by no means are they out of this game right now. Their Naga Siren still has plenty of room to grow. He's got uh, the Soul Booster ready. He almost has the Octa Core. Once he has that, the Manta will be short to follow. Then the game becomes just this grind for Team Empire. And what you said 30 seconds into the game was they don't really have high ground or tower yeah, push. Exactly. So that's really problematic when you're up against the Siren. They can't. Like, they need to focus on pushing out the lens, which essentially is already hard for their lineup. They they only have the Spectre to do so with, and he's then susceptible to be ganged out by that Nyx Assassin yeah. risk relocate combo. So it's super problematic for them. They can only team fight when all five of them are there. Oh, Puppy. He's in a relatively scary position, but yeah, I, I actually really like the point that uh, Jacob highlighted right there, because when you have a hero like the Naga Siren, we talked about how important it was to have a hero that could always constantly push out the lanes, like the Nature's Prophet. That's what opens up opportunities for your team to find kills. And you have that with the Naga, so even though Secret, things are, you know, for these mini engagements, it's not working out. The overall game plan is still okay for them. So we can say that once we do start getting into that grind, we'll see whether or not Team Empire is really a time, uh, a really team destined to be like a superstar team in, in the way that they'll be able if, whether or not they're going to be able to keep up the discipline essentially yep. uh, being able to keep their movement actually on point when team secret are poking all these holes with the constant naga siren split push yeah because every every 30 seconds every minute that passes by that empire isn't doing anything to hinder the pro progress of secret and, and siren in particular's farm they're losing basically every time the lane what? the lanes are pushed <laughs> a, a bit into the enemy team or into the uh, radiant base 
is when Empire is falling behind because they'll have a harder and harder time dealing with it and pushing out the lanes and it'll take away additional time from them. What was that timing on the blink again for Scandal? It was really late. It was a super late one, and now he's got now a you know what I 34. Yeah, you knew what I yeah, read. I, I, like, I, the moment it was like, what? I was like, yeah, Scandal's got a scythe of ice. Oh, I thought for a second you were disagreeing Ooh. with me. No, no, no. Dude, Jacob, for once, you're kind of saying great things. <laughs> <laughs> now if you could only bring that into our scrims. Yes. Oh, Jesus. Normally, normally when you talk, I'm just like kind of like... I give you the Toby zone treatment and I like zone it's, out for... <laughs> the white like noise starts happening. Like, yeah, it's like... The music starts playing, but you know, it's been pretty good. But uh, most importantly, I'm just, I'm really surprised that Scandal has the farm that he has right now. The fact that he was able to recover this well and play this safe, I think it speaks a lot to uh, just kind of like the mental fortitude that he's brought so far into this game. And at the same time, you've got the Glimmer Cape completed onto Maposhka. You have 3,800 gold already on Ramses. They're going to hit a really sick timing when it just comes to overall items. Speaking of item progression, uh, what do you think of Artisi not having a Black King bar, especially up against a lineup like this one? That I think is a mistake, because I was actually thinking about that as he completed the Shiva's Guard. I don't know, actually, I don't think it's the physical damage that bothers him so much. I think it's the the fact that he just gets disabled and his team doesn't have anything to counter disable or anything. Like well, that. to play the Devil's Advocate, I think the Shiva's Guard sort of helps them hold them in place. Like they desperately need some sort yeah. of... He just needs both more than anything. Like you could say, I don't think the mistake was completing. Like instead of just having that casual hood, I think the hood overall, like the concept behind it, is okay. I just think that as the game scaled on, they they thought they'd be in a better position with their naga, especially. It's sort of a wasted inventory slot at this point with all the disabled that is on yeah. Empire's lineup. They de he definitely does need a BKB sooner than later. I would agree with that. So we could say that Hood of Defiance is more of like they had to actually do well for themselves at 25 yeah. minutes if you're going to make were, that though. kind of game. They, they, they were they doing were. well, but I, I still think if you just kept the casual cloak, I was fine. He was already no longer the target of the, of the Lion's spells, so it had served its purpose, basically. Yeah. Right. All right, so you've got the Relic completed on this Spectre. This Spectre's Ramses is a beast. 707, he's already picked up the Manta and the Diffusal along with... Uh, the relic to go with it. This hero is going to get really scary really soon. But they also recognize that they need to push out these waves. So rather than going for for a, an item like uh, Heart of, Heart of Superask, he goes for that Radiance for additional damage and the ability yeah. to push out the waves. I, there's That combination is just really strong, no matter how you look at it. The Darkseer, Iron Shell, plus the Spectre, Radiance. When he gets on top of heroes, it's yeah, really hard to run. He might take down the, the Dazzle before he yeah, gets exactly. off Grave in the team fights. This Dazzle... He's trying to go for the Glimmer Cape because he knows it's a good item against the Spectre, but uh, not really in the best position to afford one. And right now, Empire, they've got to be careful because they've done this before where it felt like to me anyways, they were trying to force the issue when they didn't have to, when they were going for that OD mid. It's easy to get impatient against this kind of lineup and uh, Empire feels like they they should take advantage of this, like get ahead, but you can't just dive into tier twos. But if Envy plays this to perfection, we may very well see like one of these classical 80 minute games against yeah. the Night Siren where the entire Empire lineup is going to end up having BOTs because it's the only way that they can still maintain teamfight threat while pushing out the waves as well. You can see right now they have a lion separated from the rest of the team. Essentially, yeah. they, if it wasn't because of the tower, they could have relocated in on him and gotten a, a pretty easy kill as long as the Shivas comes off because yeah. the line won't be able to escape in time. More importantly than that, it's just the vision game has just not been there uh, for Secret because of this gem, this early gem pickup by the Puck. I think when you have a Spectre on your team and you're playing against a team that heavily relies on vision, and the high ground defense is going to be so much better once this Nyx Assassin completes his, his Scepter. That's actually going to be so incredibly frustrating to play against that they have a Siren and a, a, a Burrowed Nyx Assassin. Yeah. You've got the BKB now, onto Arteezy. Pilot I die just waiting up top, making sure that nothing... Uh, yeah, I'm actually gonna somewhere. make myself comfortable. I'm pretty sure this game is gonna last another 30. There really doesn't seem any way for Empire to take advantage of this great timing for the Spectre. King R's just been playing a game of hunting down illusions. He actually tried to catch uh, Eternal Levy himself there. Why? For a second. There's but... no way his team could follow... Oh, the Spectre, I guess? Yeah, yeah he's got the Spectre hunt. I think they could blow him up really quickly. I think you're underestimating how much damage, for example. Yeah, and I, I guess he didn't know bad. that the Wisp and the OD was right behind him. The Manta plus uh, the Spec Illusions, like, you can cut through heroes really quickly. I think you can absolutely assume that uh, oftentimes Eternal V is going to be alone or not to have the same kind of backup that seemingly that History Wisp would D back was, that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so 
next move for Secret, I guess, is just let the waves push in, play safe behind each other, uh, make sure you protect each other, and for Empire, it's try to, to find whatever positioning uh, advantages you can. Like, they want to try to poke holes in Secret's defense. So far, Secret haven't really uh, given up anything too big, but this might just change as Empire, they're looking around the Roche pit. There's the Manta. I'm very excited to see if a fighter breaks out, what's going to happen. Like, if this Basil dies early on, it just uh, adds more fuel to the uh, Baby Rage meme, where it will then be, instead of Peter, it'll be Puppy. Hey, where Puppy's, like, doing the best he can right now. Yeah, he definitely is. Yeah, it's like, what, what are you supposed to do is like a 0 6 3 dazzle where your team is And exactly, the, the way he's been playing Almost it is where been. he runs in as the sacrificial lamp, sort of the... Uh, almost a milk award be being given, where he runs in with a dazzle just to, to gather information and, and make sure that the rest of his team can follow in with, with perfect positioning. Jacob, the milk award though, it's not just given to... Oh, at bottom! Sorry, I, I, I missed that one. I was listening to Jacob talk, but they actually managed to get... Uh, a quick relocate out there. Yeah. To win the milk award, man, you've got to win the game while this happens. So are you saying Puppy isn't going to win the game? Hey, right now it's, I mean, it's definitely not looking close. easy. Empire, they haven't been jumping the gun too much, and now they actually might have find the kill. They know the wrist is down. Artur, oh, he's hoping for the taking, and this is going to be a huge pickoff they can actually take up, but of course they can. Empire rotated. Oh, so just like, like dies. <laughs> Holy cow! Yeah, Ramses, he's already looking for more. Almost oh. had eternal envy there as well. Jesus, that damage with the Minta style. Good read by Ramses, though. He's like, Artur's dead. I don't need to worry about it at all. Goes for the other heroes, picks up whatever extra they can. And at this point, do you agree with it? This it looks like they're going Roshan. Yeah, I think now is the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, because now your Spectre has a lot of damage to back himself up. But, man, you just see Puppy can't even survive with the big haunt. So what are you supposed yeah. to do in the rest of the game? Uh, his team gets split up. He doesn't have a high mobile hero or anything like that. So are they going to put the Aegis on the spec? I think you should. Yeah, the thing is, if they can actually manage to take him down, there's no way they can do it again. Yeah. Okay, this sucks. Yeah, Song and Siren. Yeah, Too like, dangerous. You just get out. For Empire... <laughs> that was exactly what I was going to lead to into, though, was like, is this the right play to go to Roshan? Because you do have that Song... Perhaps it would be better to just take map control at that point. Oh, so they're gonna they're gonna stack up BKB so that can keep fighting throughout yeah. Song of the Siren. No, you you have you have a good point there, and this actually is pretty bad for Empire just because they were able to get a bunch of kills. But there's two things that you can do here: is when you push out all the lanes and get aggressive on the tower, or you go for that Roshan. And I think they really wanted to go for that Roshan just because getting it onto the Spectre would be huge, and it would deny Secret another way to come back into this game. Mm -hmm. But I guess I just overestimated how much damage that Spectre does, because they did not cut through that very quickly at all. With their cliff wards, they do see opportunity here, but no! First he misses out on the stun! And now there's oh, a chance that Nando can actually be able to escape. He jumped over to his orb. Should be enough distance. He's still kind of slowed down, but does manage to get the Dream Quell to slow down Team Secret's got to be careful. Here, and they may stumble into a five-man fight they can't actually win. The Spectre ultimate is up too. They see Eternal Levy. Can they actually lock him down long enough to be able to prevent, prevent that Song of the Siren? They pop their BKBs. Eternal Levy doesn't actually have an escape from here. The rest of the secrets start coming forward, but it's too late. Eternal Levy's already gone. A pilot like that gets saved from the imprisonment, oh, the but both of these supports are just gone. And Team Secret, they're going to get fully really wiped here if they're not careful. It's going to be two of their big ones now. Both supports are dead, and it's only Universe who's going to manage to get the escape of the TP out. Once again, Team Empire, they've been playing this patiently, and once again, they found the opening against Team Secret that's going to allow them to take a huge advantage. It's just like great beat by them as well, focusing out this on, uh, the, the Naga Siren, just knowing that they picked up this Black King Bar on, on the Spectre, so they know they can take him down. They completely anticipate where it's going to It's fairly easy, you know. BKB is instant, whereas Song has an animation. And more importantly, it's the decision by Ramses. Like, oftentimes, item builds don't impact the game too much because they're usually very standard, but the decision by him to go for the BKB because he understands he can get on top of that Naga Siren exactly. and take him down really quickly, really intelligent by him. And you just gotta scratch your head if you're popping right now. Like, how is he even gonna survive through the team fights? Yeah. He wasn't even close to anyone else, and he still just ticks down. If you see his health bar in that team fight, he just ticks down from these illusions hitting him. I think it's like five or six hits from him, and he just dies, and there's nothing you can do about it other than graving himself. It yeah. all started too with that engagement at bottom when Universe misfired on the stun onto the puck. The puck in general is just gonna be a chancy target for you. Oh, wow. I mean, a, a near impossible target. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he misses the stun, but I think. 
in general, Scandal should be able to dodge that one. Like, the animation's pretty slow. Oh yeah, at this level, like, yeah. if you make it to Manila, you should be able to easily dodge. Uh, Nick's st stun of all stuns in the game is yeah. probably the easiest. You know, that this actually says so much about the game, where they have to relocate Eternal Landy up to the top lane, because we are talking about that atmosphere of fear, right? Where Empire were kind of feeling it, with the split push and the Nick's assassin setting up these relocate ganks, but they survived through that. They countered it, actually. The thing that it, beautiful play at bottom. That, and that, that only lasted awesome. two minutes, right? I don't really feel that the, the, the fear of the Nyx Assassin was evident throughout this game. It was like this two minute gap where they knew exactly how to move around the map, and from there on, on the threat was nullified. Yeah. There it wasn't was, any. It was the switch at bottom when they knew that the switch was coming from Universe. As soon as he disappears from top and he's not taking advantage of the lane, it's a uh, secret kind of telegraphing almost, saying, like, oh, our Nyx is going to be bottom here. They tuck in at bottom, they tuck in at mid, uh, and kind of just like wait out the danger. Yeah, and then, then later they actually used it yeah, to their advantage. Killed him. They just sit far enough back for him not to have vision on him. Even though I still think that's a slight misplay. Not, I mean, not, you not you do have to at least give Empire credit. They did it during night time. Yeah, exactly. They stayed really yeah. far yeah, yeah. back. They, they, they played this game throughout really, really well. Mm -hmm. 27 to 10, 15 XP, as it's now King R that's playing the Nixus test and roll as he's waiting for uh, Pilai Dai to get separated from RT. But with the Invis rune already more than halfway gone, Looks like he's a little bit hesitant about can, this. Can he actually blow up Pilai Dai and just blink TP out? No. I think he has the damage with the counter. Yeah. He needs to hit him a few times, and yeah. that's that's where the mm -hmm. the real threat comes in. I, I don't think that's worth it for him. The, the value cloak there actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think the cloak makes the difference yeah. between the death and life there. Without the cloak, he probably has enough damage. Well, he sees Puppy, and that's actually going to be able to set up the Spectre ultimate. Oh, God. And Eternal Envy blowing the uh, the Song of Siren there, afraid that he was going to be the one who's jumped. Oh, that's going to open up the map a little bit for Empire, and mm -hmm. that's going to allow them to probably take down this top tier, too. It's a 30-second gap, though. It is, but at the same time, it at least uh, lets you take this top tier 2 tower for free, because we... Oh, ac actually... We talked... I mean, we talked about it, like... Uh, yeah, it's at level 3 yet when yeah. he used it. So he actually maybe went for stats, not sure what happened I think he there. Misclicked but... there. Yeah. So it's actually uh, a bit longer. But they're going to expect. They're gonna yeah, expect yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, so again, it's, it, this game has been about the whole paranoia about what, what, what to expect, what to fear from the enemy. And I'm assuming they're going to expect a level 3 song. I think it's there, uh, by the way, even if. If Song is down, even if it's only for like 30 short seconds, it's important that you go for a play for the Hop Tower because you know now it's almost guaranteed free. We might not be able to get much more out of it, but... <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, whenever it. they have an advantage, they gotta push it. Yeah. With Nago Siren and an Ag Snix Assassin, no objective is free at this point. So, gotta take those opportunities when they present themselves. But the issue is still, as long as the Siren is alive and the Nyx too, I, I don't see them breaking the base, even if it's, a, if it's a two on five. That Spectre needs some kind of disable on them if, if, in order for him to actually kill them off and take the town, take take down the towers. Are you think he's gonna go for a heart instead of the Aegis? Uh, I'm trying to think right now. Even Butterfly has a lot of uh, potential for me, just because there's no magic burst damage from Secret, and he's got the BKB. So if he goes to the Butter, yeah. we talked about how here was like. Uh, OD especially rely on their right click. Yeah. Oh, King R. He almost had that. The whole team swarmed in. They went for, again, the relocate play. That's the second Hex, by the way. The uh, Yeah, they've, they've got the Scythe device on him. They have so much to save him. And there's something else. Oh, that's right. Mapochka, is, I think he's going for Vlad. It's kind of cool. They don't have a Vlad Zero, right? Yeah. So. But not only are these Hexes great in team fights, it's also just to immediately nullify the Siren push. Yeah. I love this. This line pickup. You see a shadow blade? Yeah. This. It, it does make a lot of sense because you know that the two supports from Secret are super slowed down in terms of farm. They can't really afford buying a gem of their own. And the best thing about it, more than anything, is you can set up for kills with the haunt within around the map. You can hunt down Eternal Envy, figure out which one the real one is. And with the seven second uh, disable, pretty sure you can kill him. I agree. That was a really smart pickup. It's a map control item more than anything, especially on the support. So there's the butterfly for the Naga Siren. Aegis is down. Maybe Secret's time to move. Probably not, though. It is hard. Wow. I, 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 I agree with your analysis, though. I think the butterfly would have been the better pickup. Now, OD is not a hero that wants to go MKB, that's for sure. 
Yeah, I guess no matter what, how you look at it, though, without the burst damage, 3100 HP is pretty good. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you're, you're not gonna match the OD ult either. Yeah, I guess that's the benefit from it. And it sustains your pushes more than anything, which is what we already talked about that we're struggling with. When you've got the Naga Siren uh, Radiant Solutions popping out, and you've got to cut through them, even losing two, three hundred bits of your. Oh, they actually go for our tour here. The side of ice opening up. The BKB already activated, but they get the relocate out. So they still manage to have the save. Eternal Envy is going to be jumped down, defused with constantly. Is going to be inside the vice as well, and should be taken out here. The vacuum into the wall. Good setup there. That's going to be able to allow Empire to fully strike on a Team Secret. It could have just been a one pick off, but now it's going to turn into so much more. And four go down from Team Secret, and Empire just opened up the base for themselves. Probably actually pulled up a, a move called the Arch Style, where he graves himself with steps. That often is also the, the quick quest. Yeah, but it, I, regardless, I don't think the fight would have mattered. No, it wouldn't have changed anything in this particular instance. Yeah, it was pretty one-sided, but I no, Empire just looking great. so dominant. They're just falling apart, and now Artur, buyback, he was the only one who had it. And now, dieback, immediate GG and DC out, and Secret are going to lose their very first game as a new team. That's Empire executing on a very high level. Mm -hmm. This is not Secret losing, that's Empire winning. Yeah, I actually completely agree. I think. A lot of people are going to look at this game and say Secret played really badly, but you have to give just as much credit for Empire on the flip side of things that uh, relocate baited bot.